let's talk today about the electromechanical systems. That means the systems that have a, um, a, some mechanical energy and, and some electrical energy. So this is what we call multi-energy systems. So let's uh, have an example for, of a motor and load and uh, see how we're going to go about modeling and also how we obtain the results using a uh, ChemG and MATLAB. So we let's take a look at a system like this. On the left hand side you have this uh, motor in here that has the uh, armature resistance in here and then there's a current on this side and that motor produces the an angular velocity right here and then we have this uh, um, the angular velocity gets transmitted to another gear over here and through this shaft it gets transmitted to this uh, particular uh, load you know, for this, uh, like a fly flywheel, and it has some dumping in here, and you are giving all these values in here. So the idea is that we have an electrical side over here, and we have a mechanical side on this side. How would we put this together? On the left-hand side, we have the motor, with the armature resistance and the voltage. This is this GY element, which is the motor. And then you have the armature damping. And uh, then we have the gears here. So this angular velocity on this point would correspond to the angular velocity right here. Then you have the transformer and then you have the second angular velocity over here. Now you know in here the inertia of course is the load that we have over here but um, the damping so you have an I element and an R element on the right hand side which would, would model the load, inertia and damping. In this particular case, the inertia of the, um, of the armature is combined with the inertia of the load, and you only have one element on this side. If we didn't do that, and um, we have the, R the I element over here, we would obtain derivative form, derivative causality. By combining those two, we don't have that problem. Okay, so it's gonna be, but we have to be careful to make the energy transformation correctly. Okay, when you put this model into the CAMG software, the computer is going to produce, uh, in this case, the state space form. So for the A, B, C, and D matrices, the first thing that it does is derives the differential equation, which in this case, we have only one, because if you look at the, uh, the elements in integral form, the I's and C's that are the ones that produce equations, we only have one. And that's the reason why we only have DP9 as the derivative. And then, of course, the output in here, I mean, the, this, that equation also has components on the, you know, for the, for, for the input, PU, the input is over here, right there. So, remember A, X plus B, U, so we have A and B in here. And then, uh, in this case, 
we have made uh, an additional state variable called theta, which would be the angle. And we want to put that also as a state variable. In this case, we are adding one. And then we go and define the outputs, F9, F7, and E7. And those are the equations for those outputs, like this one, F9. This is F7. And E sub 7. CAMG will generate the, uh, this is E sub 7. CAMG will generate all these equations for all the efforts and flows in the entire bone graph model. And then it's up to the user to pick which ones we want. We have in this case, um, we have the F9, which would be the first one over here for the C matrix. Then we have F sub 7, which be number 2. And then you have E7, which be number 3. Um, in this case, we have chosen to add theta as an output also, so we add C sub 4. And then once we do this, uh, we can generate the transfer function the different transfer functions here for the different outputs. So the, this is the form that they will come, like E3 over V of S, which would be the armature voltage, the angular velocity, and the load position. Okay, so a CAMG will set MATLAB up to produce all these transfer functions. Once you have the transfer function, you could uh, do a step uh, input and the step response and that's what you have here the position and then you have the velocity here or you could do in the frequency domain by using the transfer function so the the first example, you could use the state space form for the time domain uh, response and use the transfer function for the frequency domain. You can see both of them have to look the same. Like this one has to be this, and this has to be the other one right here. So whether you work on the time domain or the frequency domain, we have, I have illustrated how to obtain the state space response. Also, in, you have the option to obtain the body plots, you know, the frequency response for the system. And let me show you where that is. In here, right there, you're going to say body, the body plot. So in so you gi you're giving the transfer function and then you're getting the 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 body plot. CAMG will generate those statements automatically in the file CAMG SYM. And in here I just tried some different figures in here to illustrate other body plots like uh, motor shaft velocity, motor shaft torque, and body plot of the position angle um, load, okay? So that you can see these are all those, the, resp the body plots of those. Okay, what we can conclude off of this? CAMG will generate symbolic transfer functions, useful feature to design controls. Um, we could use sensitivity analysis to a certain parameter if we know what we want to change on the study. Um, we are able to transform the bone graph models into transfer functions and then use all MATLAB uh, commands and tools. Um, 
you could change the the physical system model the, by adding or taking away elements and produce a new simulation in just a matter of a few seconds. That is why we concluded this can save a tremendous amount of time as opposed to having to derive the new equations by hand. Um, this is is possible to use and obtain the transfer functions for multi-energy systems, as you can see in this case. The once the bone graph model has been created, it really uh, the computer uh, processes for as multi-energy systems. Of course, we could simulate nonlinear systems using this, this approach. Okay.